Hope you guys had a great holiday. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Back to work. That's what I hear. Mike, at this point, biggest challenge seeing who's healthy enough to, 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 to put together a roster for Sunday? Uh, no, not at this point. Um, our challenge is to, is to put a plan together um, and, and get our players to understand it and how we can play better, um, certainly against this opponent on the road, uh, and win. That, that's what the challenge is. We'll, we'll make sure that there's 48 guys that are you know, ready to go, that are as healthy as they can be and um, ready to, to, to win. This team has been so good in your first five seasons in one score games. This year, uh, uh, the record is the other way. You've yep, talked we lost all... seven games by one score. You've talked a lot about that fine line. Mm -hmm. How? What is the challenge of trying to navigate that and, and, and end up on the on the good side of that line? Yeah, I think it's just always just the little things that end up adding up. I mean, we would love to 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 be ahead fourteen points in in the fourth quarter, and you know use the clock to our advantage and rush the quarterback and, and try to, you know, create uh, negative plays um, when you get into those situations. But, you know, that, that's not where we've been. Uh, so it's just the, the little, little details, the little plays. Uh, one guy here on a screen, a cut, um, you know, uh, one, one throw defensively, you know, making, making one play and, and you know, hitting the ball out or, or intercepting it or one penalty here, you know, it's hard to overcome, you know, 15 yard penalties in a close game or a, a, a false start that makes it first and 15 against a good defense. And, you know, so those are all the things that we continue to preach and to continue to coach. And, you know, we're, we're going to you know, make sure that, uh, you know, we all see it and, and try to find ways to, to eliminate it. We have one score record to tell you you're, you're close or that maybe you're not built to finish? Oh, I don't know if we're not built to finish. I just think that uh, I think that we're close. You know, we've been close, you know, a lot of times. And we've sat up here and we could go through all the plays that, you know, are very positive, that are well coordinated uh, with a lot of uh, effort and execution involved in it. And then, you know, there's just too many of those plays that, you know, that, that get you beat, you know. And so, you know, we've got, you know, I was excited to be able to play uh, young, some young guys that and really took advantage of the opportunity. And, uh, and whether that's on special teams or offense and defense, you know, but, uh, you know, I don't know if it, it's not being able to, to finish. It's just being able to, uh, you know, get in those positions. And, and again, we – came from behind in Miami, you know, gave up the score there yesterday and, or a couple of days ago, you know, and then just really um, didn't get into that last drive, you know, how we needed to. That's That was probably the most disappointing thing. When you look at DeAndre Hopkins just individually, you know, he's 69 yards or 61 yards, I think it is, from 1K. You guys haven't had that in a while. As you look back, you know, how much has he been a, a plus for you guys? Yeah, I mean, roster? he's been uh, – Everything that, that we've wanted, you know, I know that he uh, and we all would, would wish that things were different and that we would, uh, you know, had won more games up until this point. Uh, but I appreciate his attitude, his willingness, his competitiveness, uh, you know, each and every week. And, uh, you know, he'll, we'll find ways to, to hopefully have him help us this week and, uh, and, and moving forward. Has he been a steady and influence for your rookie quarterback in Levis? Well, I, you know, I think that that's, that's something that's been there. I think that, you know, early on they've had, you know, conversations. And, again, Hop's played a lot of years, and, you know, he's seen a lot of different coverages and things happen out there. And, um, you know, so the most important thing is that those guys are on the same page. Uh, there's nothing more important than that relationship. Uh, if I'm a receiver, I'm going to make sure that the quarterback – you know, knows where I'm going to be. So I think that they've worked hard on that. Um, you know, we'll see, you know, hopefully they can, you know, do that this week. Yeah, have you seen the improvement from Will, I guess, since last week? You're still hoping to get him? Uh, yeah, I, w I mean, I think he'll try to practice tomorrow, uh, you know, probably in a, in a limited basis. But I think that he's uh, better, he's improved, 
and uh, he's been working hard to, to get back like everybody else. Do you feel like it's important to get him work if he's able to do it? I do. I do. I think that those are, um, you know, invaluable reps. I uh, would anticipate a, um, you know, great road environment, Gentry, and, I, and you know, playing, playing on a road and in a, a loud environment and being able to handle the operation and, and work the offense and, you know, I know that that's something that that's always critical. So, what would I want everybody that can play to to possibly play? On Sunday, it wasn't very close. It wasn't close enough. How, how do you uh, explain? Go ahead, Corey. Yeah, how do you explain Danico at this point in his career? I mean, is it DNA? Is it preparation? Well, I think it's a lot of it is uh, is will. A lot of it is his core values, his competitive spirit. You know. Going back to when he was undrafted uh, and having that mentality every single day of his career, whether he was a free agent that was sought after to go to Indy or that came here, having that same mindset uh, and mentality. Um, so that's probably in his fabric to, to, to be like that. And, uh, you know. He's continued to improve, continued to understand the game. He's a very instinctive player and you know, plays inside, plays outside for us, does, does a lot of different things. How do you think Ruppy showed up in there uh, in his first start? Well, I thought Ruppy, you know, you saw him around a pile a lot. So I appreciate, one, the, the, the willingness to, to go and finish and try to protect the guy with the ball. I thought that, uh, you know, tried to play you know, physical and try to, you know, help us in the middle of the pocket. You know, there was some mistakes, but I thought he held up okay and was confident in how he would play based on, you know, what we saw, uh, you know, in Tampa when he went in there. You punted on a, I think it was fourth and four from there, 42. What was the rationale there? Well, it just felt like our defense was playing well and, uh, you know, could, could potentially, you know, pin him. Three fifteen yarders, and I guess the Mike Brown one. I was curious about that one. Is that an automatic um, flag there around the knees, or how did you interpret that call? Uh, optics, I guess. And, and then the three of them. I mean, uh, well, why don't you tell me what you saw, Jim? Tell me which was, ones you liked and you didn't like. Let's yeah, go I mean, from I'm there. I'm assuming you didn't like because they're not going to find you. Yeah, well, I'm assuming you didn't like any of them. I'm in the hole here from yeah. Christmas, so. Okay, so I, I guess <laughs> maybe instead of getting you to Jaleel, grab the guy's face mask. Right. I, I will tell you this: that crew, uh, they they lead the league in a wide margin, very wide margin for unnecessary roughness. Just like I don't think Diggs's hit against Traylon was a defenseless receiver was dirty. I thought he hit him in the chest. Thought it was a very, very good hard hit, a physical hit. Keep going. I'll respond as you go on. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not getting you to question the call. Wallo had a had a hands at a face on a kickoff. I guess, and there's 20 guys running yeah. into each other. I guess. Their hands are going to probably end up around their face every once in a while. So you you want guys to play hard, but yeah, I mean we yeah, I mean ball. I think Jaleel, you know, if a guy after the play is is driving you. Uh, you know, and you grab him by the face mask and jerk him down. Like, they usually see the second guy, right? So I tell, I mean, Jaleel knows better. Motion's got the best of him, whatever. You mentioned yeah. on Sunday, I mean, the call is in their favor, or would have been in their favor, but for officials to kind of keep their hands in their pocket when they don't see something on Metcalf's touchdown, I mean, is that guy just kind of. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, again, it just, uh, you know, I'll, when I go watch Carter play baseball, I think the best thing is a decisive call. Ball, strike, safe, out, so that everybody knows. And then, you know, there's a challenge mechanism uh, in, in our league and, and, you know, obviously in the major leagues that, that can then go. But, you know, blow the whistle. Our, our guys are coached um, and, and taught – to, to play through the, the whistle, play to the whistle, uh, and finish and block their guy, just like you saw Raider doing it at times. They say, like OJ, I mean, these guys are trying to finish. And when you want the play to end or when the officials think the play's over, blow the whistle. And then 
when the end of the play is and just give a signal or throw the flag or whatever you're going to do, but just do something and be decisive. And then that way everybody knows and, you know, we can challenge the play in Pete's instance or, you know, if it was a touchdown, then it was going to be automatically reviewed. That's all. Where do you think the run game was more effective on Sunday? Well, I thought we did a better job of getting into the line of scrimmage. I thought we did a better job of, you know, getting the backers. And then we had some missed opportunities. We had three screens that should have had, you know, explosive gains uh, with, with Mason and Tajay and Derek, you know, whether it was a block or cut. You know, we had some good runs. We had some runs, you know, we need to, you know, block them better. But, uh, you know, guys were trying to compete, try to finish, and and gave us, uh, you know, some efficient runs there. Mike, the young guy like that, every gets thrown in the fire and kind of struggles a bit at times. What what goes into the, to the coaching of that up this week in regards to you and his position coach and such? Does that have to get him, obviously, you know, right back out there to play? Yeah, I mean, it's pro football, and those guys are talented players, and, you know, making sure that you're playing with good technique and you're playing with a competitive spirit to, to challenge. You know, it's a tough place out there playing corner. Uh, you know, Trey's been out there. And Trey's challenged for us, made some plays, and, you know, they they, they made some plays the other day on, on him, and, you know, he's got to be willing to come back and compete and learn another opponent. How much can you learn about some of the guys on this roster character-wise? I don't know if that – evaluation process is, you know, still ongoing with especially It absolutely is. I, I think I got a pretty good idea about the character of most of these guys, but they're they're more than uh, willing to or more than capable of proving me right or wrong um, this week and you know, against Jacksonville. You um, Houston. Go ahead. I said this week and then Oh, sorry. Apologies. <laughs> Multitasking, sorry. You, you had talked in the past, we'd asked about rolling Will out, and you talked about kind of the sacrifices you made in terms of cutting the field in half and it not necessarily being worth it a lot of times. You roll, it seemed to roll Tannehill out a, a decent amount in this game. So I'm curious what made it different. Well, we, yeah, you know, I mean, I think just the, the, the health or one, you know, I mean, you made like a, you know, a, a bootleg. You know, one was a was a rollout that wasn't successful, and we've moved Will. You know, we've moved Ryan, and um, yeah, you know, I think just some of that is based on on what you think you're going to get out on the outside. If you're going to get some sort of, you know, man coverage, I would say that in uh, uh, most critical uh, two point conversion of the season in Miami, Will was rolling out. So I don't know what, what else, you know what I mean? Like it's just pretty much situational and kind of what you think you're going to get. I mean, if they zone it off, you know, it's not going to be great. I know Jeffrey uh, probably loved to play again this year, but decision made to put him on our last week, just he just wouldn't gonna be able to protect himself and play. Well yeah, no, he was, I mean, the decision, these are hard decisions. I mean, everybody that ultimately uh, goes on IR, especially at this point in time of the season, you know, they're disappointed. They, they want to be out there. And, but we also have an obligation to, to put 48 guys out there that, you know, can, can help us win. And those guys weren't going to be available. And the ones that we put on IR weren't going to be available this week. So we started there um, with, with those players that, that weren't going to be available this week. Are there any challenges in your experience to playing a team twice <clears throat> so close to one another? Well, I don't think they're going to change much. I think that they're going to be um, ready to go after, you know, yesterday's game or two days ago or Sunday's game. And, and hopefully, you know, we feel the same way. Um, and, uh, you know, there's some familiarity. You know, you just looked at them. You just looked at the personnel, play style, um, scheme. So hopefully there's some, some recall uh, there about who they have and, and, and how they like to, to use them. Same time, they seem to be substantially different with Stroud if he's back? Sure. I mean, I don't, I don't think the plays, you know, I don't think the concepts, you know, are going to change. But, you know, Nico Collins is back. He's having a hell of a year. He's a great, great receiver. Um, you know, and obviously the year that CJ was having, um, I, I just only probably enhances – 
the, the plays that they run, you know. So I don't think it's a completely different offense, but it will have different players uh, functioning within it. Mike, going back to the, the one score games, earlier, you know, in your tenure, a lot of that, if you look at Derek's numbers in the fourth quarter, he would kind of get going and take over a game late. And how much of this do you think the last year or two has been an inability to kind of take the ball and just kill off a game? Um, you know, Gentry, I haven't, you know, certainly grinding out the clock there when you get it with four or five minutes. You know, we've, we've done that. Um, we, we did that at times last year. I don't know how many times we've done it this year. Certainly not enough. Um, but, you know, when, when you're down, you, um, you don't have the luxury to do that. Like, we used Derek to go down there the other day and score – just didn't get a stop, you know, didn't get a stop defensively. So then we're, we're back in a two minute mode, you know, and that's not, you know, Derek can operate in that, but that's not his primary role. Uh, we know that. Um, now, if we're up six, seven, eight, you know, 10 points, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to rely on Derek and, and a run game and, and all that stuff to, to help us, um, find a way to, to, to get down there in a four minute and all the stuff that we talk about in four minute about, you know, the, the penalties and staying in bounds and, you know, not, uh, you know, just, just all the, the reminders that we talked to him about in four minute uh, that we just haven't been able to be in four minute enough. You gotta be winning.